Hello, welcome to another Cleve Tech Tech Tip. Now I'm pretty sure I said last time that I thought it was going to be the last one getting this motor running, but there was quite a bit of work to do on the M-Bell, so I didn't quite get it running. But you join me this time, and this time we're going to put the armature in, and we're going to get it spaced correctly, and we're going to get the brushes in, and we're going to get it all up and running into the state that you see here. If you haven't been following this series, again I'll put a link in this top corner here of where you can see all this motor rebuilding series. So take a look because we've done quite a lot to this motor so far to get it back up and running and there's some interesting things that we're going to do this time. So stay tuned and I'll see you in a mo. So the next stage is to space the armature correctly inside the magnetic field. So we'll carefully take that out of its tube, take the M-bell off, put the armature in place and slide it in there. Now I know the M-bell is going to line up quite nicely, I know the M-bell is quite secure, but I just need to check, does the armature move nicely? Yes, it does. It seems to sit quite nicely there. So give it a spin. That's where the armature wants to sit. So if I look closely, I can see how much spacing is roughly needed at each end. So you can see there's quite, quite a few spaces needed at this end. Not so many at the comm end. But it's also worth checking as well where the armature sits. Does the comm sit nicely um, in terms of the brush rubbing onto the comm? If the comm is, if the armature was sitting sort of like this, then clearly the brush isn't going to work very well because it's going to run on that uh, brass spacer there. Likewise, if the, if the armature was pushed too far that way and the brushes would be right, running on the uh, little tabs, solder tabs on the comm, then that wouldn't be any good either. But I knew from the position where I glued the magnets that that would be fine for where the comm would sit in regards to the brushes. So again, if you haven't seen my magnet gluing video, I'll put one here. But you maybe need to make sure that the magnets are glued in or magnets are positioned correctly to enable the armature to line up nicely and for the brushes to run nicely onto the comm. So now we know roughly where the armature needs to sit. Let's put some spacers on the armature shaft and see where we go with that. So I've got some spacers here. Slide them onto the shaft and the same at the other end. Might be too much, it might be too little, I don't know yet, but I've just sort of judged it by eye at the moment as to what I might need. Let's have a look. Right, so the armature still moves from end to end, but have I got the right spacers in there. Let's give it a spin. Hold the M-bell on, give it a spin and let's see where it sits. So here's a close-up look. Now I need to see where this sits. So if I push it back a little bit like that, you can see there's still a little bit of play at the M-bell end and it springs back. Push it the other way and there's a fraction of a movement there at the can end. So I definitely don't want any more spaces at the can end. I think that's pretty close. But the M bell end, I might get away with a really, really thin spacer just to stop the armature shaft from going end to end. Let's have a look. 12 seconds later. Here we are. That looks a bit more promising. So there's a tiny amount of movement end to end there. And I'm happy that the armature is situated in the middle of that magnetic field. You can see it sort of wants to sit somewhere in the middle of where those two washers are. I oh, better put the M-bell on the right way just to make sure. Yep, I think I'm happy with that with that position of where that sits. So because I'm happy with that, I'm going to put the M-bell screws back in and check that everything still moves nice and freely. So that's all for M-bell screws back in and the armature still moves nicely just between those two bearings there in the motor. It's moving freely. I don't know whether you can just about 
see that motion there it spins spins freely like that but there's one thing i have forgotten to do which is a bit of a pain because i'm going to have to take the m bell back off again so when you have your armature space correctly and you've got your right spaces on each end just before you assemble it all back together you might want to make it just look a little bit nicer so i'm going to clean off the stack i'm going to use a little bit of acetone on my cloth again i'll put a link in the video description of where you can get some acetone from but it's really good at removing all the old armature dye off of the motor stack like so so that's all cleaned up like that and then i can get some armature dye now i use lucky bobs armature dye i've mentioned this i use lucky bobs flux as well uh, again i'll give you some links of where you can get that kind of stuff from uh, in the video description below but I'll give it a bit of a shake this is red armature dye red is always faster so we'll wipe some off of the brush like that i'll hold the armature and then i'll paint some onto the armature like that down inside there like that and keep going around the stack so we'll give it a coating like that and make sure the coating's as even as you can get it a little bit more for the third pole you can see that these balancing holes in the armature they're not all the work of dave harvey at 101 especially these great big ones when he put it onto his balancer he didn't really need to touch these great big ones he didn't quite know why there were three massive ones taken out of that pole he ended up having to do some very small drill holes in a couple of the other poles to even it up and improve the balance but that armature die goes off quite quickly it dries quite quickly but i'm going to give it one more coat over the top to make sure it's a nice even red coating a few moments later and just to let that dry i'm just going to put it in the end of the end bell like that just to let it dry off a little bit before i assemble the motor if you don't have any armature die a permanent marker pen will do the job pretty much just as well you can just color in the armature stack with a permanent pen again red is faster now that the armature die is dry i can reassemble the motor once again let's go go it's a nice red armature inside there and i'll replace all the screws and i'll be back in a minute so the motor's back together now if you, if you rem Ooh, just knocked the cupboard door next to me apologies for that noise the motor's back together you can see these are these were the original brushes that came out of it that didn't line up remember i said that at the start of the video and that was the whole point of redoing the whole m bell but then i also have this pair of brushes that are partly used but not used very much, but they've got a nice even curve to the end of them. They were obviously in a motor where the brush gear was lined up very nicely. Now, I don't have anything to reshape the ends of these brushes to the right size diameter for that commutator. So it's going to take a little bit more running in. Um, but again, in a tech tip extra, I'll show you how I can minimize that running in period by shaping the brushes correctly. So I'm going to get rid of those two brushes there. Let's move all of that out the way. And then I'm going to make sure that these brushes slide nicely in these brush hoods all the way down to the comm. So they slide in, they're quite loose. Do they fall out? Yes, they do. Try this one this side. Slide it in. Like that. Does it slide out okay without binding? Well, a little bit tighter on that one. So what I'm going to do... So I'm going to take some really, really, really fine used wet and dry paper. I'm just going to rub the brush just gently on all four sides, just on the wet and dry paper, just to take off any perhaps burrs or on the edge of the brush like that. And let's see, does that 
fit in now. I'll try it both sides. I can't remember which way I put the motor down now, which way around it was. So it goes into that side. Does it fall out? Yes, it falls out. Does it go into this side? Like that. Does it fall out? Yes. Just check again. Falls into that side, falls out. Yes. So this brush now fits in both sides quite nicely. Just check the other brush once again. You just do not want your brushes to bind up. So again, look, see that brush catches on that side a little bit. So I'm just going to do the same again on that brush. Again, you don't need to take a lot off the brushes. You don't want them wobbling around in the brush hoods. You just want to take off the smallest amount, just if there's any burr, slight burrs on the edge of the brush, just to smooth off the brush that fraction. Let's see, does it fit in now nicely? Goes in there, falls out, pushes in this side, like that, falls out. So I'm happy that both of those brushes fit nicely in those brush hoods. Right, I did a quick check of the rules and I just checked that there's nothing in the rules that says you can't use shunts on the brushes. It just says C, D, can dimensions and Falcon motors are permitted. So it seems you can shunt the brushes okay. There's nothing in the rules that uh, against any of that. So I've got my springs ready. These are Cohosa three coil springs. See, I've just insulated the uh, one side of the brush, or sorry, the spring there. Now I'm going to run my, put my brush in place. You notice it's already got a slot in the back of it for the spring to fit into and obviously the shunt wire as well. So I can drop my brush into the brush hood. There we go, like that. Now you can see why I made sure that that slot was long enough in there for the brush spring to hook into. My brush spring should hook nicely over there, over the spring post. Now the brush springs themselves are actually slightly different. I'll bring them close so you can see them much closer up. So here we go. So you can see the one I've hooked on that side. Let's turn that one round to the same as well, like that. So you can see that they're actually wound in sort of the opposite way in that this spring, this side of the spring, this short uh, spring arm, if I hook it on there, can you see how the short spring arm is sort of at the top there in the picture? and the long spring arm sort of wound round and it comes in the bottom and it hooks into here. This other one, if I can hold it in the right way, is actually the opposite in that the short spring arm would be at the bottom and the long spring arm at the top. So that's for use on the other side when I flip the brush, the brush spring round like that. You want the long post at the bottom so it hooks into here and you want the short spring post towards the top so it lines up with the brush. So I have my shunt wire here. Um, if you haven't got any shunt wire, you can make some shunt wire out of some old lead wire. Just strip it off, maybe take a few strands of lead wire out, twist it together, and you have your own shunt wire here. There are all sorts. Some shunt wires are sort of flat in their design. They're sort of rolled flat like braid would be. Uh, some are sort of totally round. Um, but I'm going to hook that onto there, just under that brush spring post. It's a bit hard to do this holding it up for the video, but that's hooked underneath like that. And then the spring can hook around onto that brush spring post. So I'll hook that back again, back all together in a second, and I'll be back with you in a minute. Much, much, much later. Now, when I went to hook that spring on, it wasn't an easy job. And you can see I've had to just make a small modification to the motor. This side, perfectly all right. Little, little spring hook all in place here. This side here, the spring hook had sort of been a bit mashed up and whether it had been ground down a little bit or something, but the spring hook itself wasn't a full width and the spring wouldn't hook and actually fit onto the hook. The hook wasn't quite in the right place. The long part of the spring wouldn't hook in. So I've had to fashion out a, another spring hook out of an old, some old brush gear. So I just took that screw off. I've trimmed off this out some old brush gear and screwed the screw back in again that holds that hook in place there 
So the spray should be able to put the spring on and hook it in place again this time. So there we are, that spring hooks on nicely now and goes under the spring hook nicely. You can see I've put my shunt wire on there in between the insulated part of the brush spring. This is just a piece of silicon tube, that little yellow stuff there. You can get it for insulating brushes, sorry, brush springs, because you don't necessarily want all the current going through the brush spring and overheating the brush spring. So that helps insulate the brush spring. So I'm going to sort of finish off by bending this shunt wire around and soldering it on ready. And then I'll do the other side as well. And then we'll be nearly ready for testing. Okay, there we are. That's the shunt wires and springs installed onto the motor. You can see the way I've done the shunt wires. This is going to be the bottom of the motor as it's sitting in the chassis. So I'm probably going to be soldering the lead wires to here and here to keep them nice and low in the chassis. Um, I might solder them to here and here, but probably to these bottom plates here. So I've soldered the shunts near the top. So I'm not going to desolder those when I put the lead wires on. You can see that I've made sure, if I'm moving with a knife here, that they are really flexible and I haven't soldered all the way along the shunt wire because it does act as like a little bit of a wick the moment you uh, apply some solder to it and the solder goes all the way along the shunt wire. But if you're quick, it doesn't do it. Also, if you can hold a knife or a pair of tweezers or a pair of pliers somewhere along the shunt wire, it stops the solder from wicking along the shunt wire because it acts as a bit of a heat sink and the solder doesn't go any further along the shunt wire. So I've made sure that both shunt wires move nice and freely like this so that as the brushes wear down, the spring can push the shunt wire along with it and it should still make nice contact with the brush. So that's the motor back together again. So it's ready for a quick test. Before I run it up, I'm just gonna put a small blob of oil on each end and each bearing. Don't wanna to put too much because I don't want it to get onto the commutator by accident. And a little blob on that and a blob from the inside like that. There we go. Give it a turn over just to make sure the oil runs into the bushes. And then I'm gonna put that on very low volts on a power supply. So there we have it. The motor is rotating. Now it's always worth making sure it does rotate in the right direction so you can feel it on the armature shaft, feel it rotating like that. If it runs the wrong way it might even run slower in the reverse direction. So it's always worth checking to see if you've got your magnets in the right way or your m bell on the right way round etc etc because if you switch the m bell round you can reverse it. Uh, or if you've got your magnets around the wrong way, you can reverse the direction of rotation. So I'm currently running that motor on about 2.8 volts. Um, it's not going to hurt it much, but it's worth having a look into here, see if there's any arcing or sparking on the brushes. If there is, then it might be a bad brush, or it could be that you've made a mistake in your alignment of your brushes. But at that volts, you shouldn't see too much. But they've got to run themselves in. So I'm going to keep that on that power supply, uh, say between two and a half and three volts. I'm going to run that now for about half an hour at least. And then I'm going to take it apart and have a look at one of the brushes and see how they've run in. Alexa, set a motor timer for 30 minutes. Motor timer, 30 minutes, starting now. Your motor timer is up. Your motor timer is up. Alexa, stop the motor timer. Okay, so my motor timer is up. How well have they run in? Let's open it up and have a look. Let's just unhook the shunt wire. Let's have a look at the motor brush. Let's have a close look. Right, I don't know whether you can see in this video, but you can see just that shiny part of the brush just hasn't fully worn in yet. So you can just about see that we've got more or less of a shiny part here, but that bit hasn't quite run in yet. So I'm going to need to run it for a little bit longer until I get that same shininess and that same shape across the whole of the face of the brush. So I'm going to put it back together and probably run it for another half an hour around three volts. So the motor's pretty much finished running in. 
I will show you a brush in a minute, just so you can see how they're supposed to look when they're run in. Here we go, there's the brush that's been run in. You can see it's all the same all over the surface. And it's got a nice curve to it where it's been run in. You can see the edges of the brush just starting to flake away there in my hands. Ought to be careful with that. But that's fully run in now, all the way around the surface, and it has a nice semicircular arc to it. So I'll put that back in. Okay, so we're running the motor. Let's run it up and see what happens. So there we go, we're running it at five volts. There's a few little arcs you can see in here. Not too bad. The comm's not great on it, so it doesn't surprise me that there's a little bit of arcing, but I've seen a lot worse than that. So I'd like to thank you for watching another Cleave Tech Tech Tip. We're currently looking at one of the brushes running on the comm. The motor's running around at around 5 volts, and you can see there's just a fraction of arcing around the brush. That's pretty, pretty normal. If you see more than that happening, then that's too much arcing. But I've filmed this in slow-mo, so let's just take a quick look and see what arcs we can see. I hope you've enjoyed watching this series of me rebuilding this motor. But now it's time to put this motor back in the car. So we're going to carry on with some chassis work next time. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button as well. That helps push my video out to other people. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.